medical officer is Dr. Uta from Peterborough. Your timekeeper is Danny Peacock. And your third man in the ring is star referee Dave Paris from London. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event. 12 three-minute rounds for the British Super Bantamweight title. Introducing first, the challenger, wearing the red trunks with white trim. Fighting out of Condorad in Scotland, this gentleman weighs in at eight stone nine and three quarter pounds. He brings an impressive record to the ring, ladies and gentlemen. 21 fights with 15 wins, four inside the distance, against only five defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former undefeated British bantamweight champion, Wearing the black trunks with gold trim. Fighting out of Harrow and Peterborough. Weighing in at eight stone nine pounds. This gentleman brings also an impressive record to the ring. 20 fights, 18 wins. Nine coming inside the distance against only two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning British Super Bantamweight Champion, Patrick. Referee Dave Paris from Tottenham in North London. Boys, punch with the knuckle part of the glove. If one of you goes down, the other goes to the furthest neutral corner. Break when I tell you to. Defend yourself at all times. Shake hands, boys. Good luck to you both. Just looking at them in the ring. Doherty just looking a little bit loosely muscled, not quite as honed, making the move up from bantamweight to super bantamweight. You wonder if this is his natural weight where the Mullins might be more naturally the stronger man of these two at this weight. Black Trunks then, the defending champion, Pat Mullins, the red of Drew Doherty. How does he look to you, Glenn Doherty? Well, I think it really just depends how he gets in this fight. I think if Mullins can put the pressure on as he's trying to do now, that would serve him well. But I think if he lets Doherty in the fight, it could be a, a tough fight for Mullins. Mullins, you heard what he said. If Doherty stands still for more than 10 seconds, he's in trouble. Mullins, though, does tend to fight in spurts, I've noticed, in one or two recent fights, and he does occasionally have trouble with fellows who are stylists, and Doherty certainly is in that category. Last time out, Mullins, a bit lucky to pick up the verdict we fought against another Scott, Brian Carr, who seemed to outbox Mullins, but didn't get the decision. <laughs> Mullins is noted as a fast starter. I think we've seen that already. Doherty looking to get there, the centre of the ring, looking to try and take the fight to Mullings behind that jab. Vastly experienced Drew Doherty, and usually pretty durable. He's only been stopped a couple of times by the high-class Ghanaian Alfred Cote and Johnny Friedel. That was in 97. Doherty good enough to be a British bantamweight champion and to have a Lonsdale belt to keep for his work in that division. But he is moving up a division here, remember, Drew Doherty, the one in the red trunks here, the challenger from Scotland. very fast, Mullins has just gone a little quiet in the round and Doherty being allowed to settle into his rhythm well really that's what Mullins can't afford to do nice body punch there, needs to keep good pressure on Doherty and that's better for Mullins Mullins
Queen's in need of a really spectacular win to just re-establish his reputation a little. He's made a good start here in the first round. Doherty not really doing too much, just looking a shade tentative. It was a good burst of punches from Mullins, but he needs to keep that sort of pressure on. Can't allow Doherty to build up the points. Mullins is round. First ever British title fight in Peterborough tonight, certainly the first one on the Saturday night with an hour in the month anyway. And a good opening round for Pat Mullins. Yes, it was. Just in the middle, he started to um, go backwards from Doggerty and allowed Doggerty to pick up some points. But there were some good attacks from Mullins. They're working to the body. He has to keep that kind of pressure on Doggerty. I think that will really will take all the fight out of him. But Doggerty is very experienced and just if he starts working behind that jab, could cause problems for Mullins. Mullins seems determined not to let Doherty settle. Mullins, you'll notice a southpaw. It's only the second time that Drew Doherty has faced a southpaw in a, his career, although he's done a lot of work in the gym, notably as he was growing up with former world champion Pat Clinton. Those two kind of grew up together in Scotland. He's not the kind, is he, to be rattled by these furious combinations that Mullins can produce from time to time. He'll just use his patience, I think, to just work his way into the fight if he can. The danger for him is that Mullins just might get to him before he has been allowed to settle. Mullins has to take away any confidence that Doherty might have or might be trying to build in there. He needs to come hard at Doherty all the time. And the time's in a round, Mullins just tends to go to sleep a little bit. And just fighting spurts, he needs to, to do more throughout the round. Mullins' new trainer, Kevin Sanders, was telling me they have been working on improving his work rate and getting him to try to throw the left hand more. special and then a couple of performances later he'll look quite ordinary I'm not quite sure what you're going to get with him yes there was a spell uh, a couple of years ago when he really started to, to look exciting and get the, the fights over inside the distance and then recent times that sort of uh, work is just just weakened out a bit good work rate from Pat Mullins. He's looking a little reddened around the, around the left cheekbone, Drew Doherty. <laughs> Doherty needs to keep his punches straight through the middle of the, the textbook left right. Would work well against Mullins in the south post stand. If he can be quick enough accurate enough to get these punches on. It's a nice little burst here from Drew Doherty, probably his best yet. But that's deep into round two. Well, this fight for the British Championship at Super Bantamweight. There's a check on the world champions for you. Eric Morales is one of the most outstanding pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, and we have him on Sky Sports making his next title defence in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, you, Marco Antonio Barrera there, who we saw demolish Paul Lloyd, and Michael Brody going well on the domestic scene, European Commonwealth champion. Maybe we'll see Mullings against Brody someday soon. First, he has to get past Drew Doherty here, though. It's the third round. Doherty in the red trunks, the... Challenger from Condorat, northeast of Glasgow in Scotland, mining country. First two rounds to Mullins. Good work from Mullins, mixing the punches up quite well, and he's much busier than Doherty, not really allowing Doherty to settle. And really, that's got to be the, the game plan for Mullins. Good left 
took. Getting through there from Mellings to the head. Doherty, who's a quiet, almost shy, very dedicated man to his boxing. He says, when I'm not boxing, I'm training. Good shots to the body here from Mullins. He's having things much his own way. A couple of those, the referee felt, had just uh, drifted a little bit low. Not sure how low they were, though. Well, they didn't look too bad. That was a, a good spell from Mullins, getting his punches together well, and I thought he was starting to get through the defence quite well. It's a sharp performance, this, from Mullins so far. Can he keep it up? His hands are quite well on the ropes there, content just to let Doherty throw punches. Mullings, who first came to our notice when he was in that great fight with Spencer Oliver. Spencer stopped him in the 10th round. It was only a Southern Area title fight. They should have made a lot more money, those two together, in a fight like that. His other defeat was against Simon Ramoni, the smart, slick boxing South African. Well, he looks much more fired up for this fight. Mullins getting good body punches in there. Bound to be having an effect on Doherty. Can't get into the fight at the moment, really, Drew Doherty. And he's in danger here of maybe just getting worn down. Looks like he wants it a little bit more, Mullins. Certainly trying very, very, very hard for this fight, including getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and running from the East of England showground five miles into the city centre here. End of the round. Let's uh, have a word, shall we, with the man that Pat Mullins scored in that great fight, Spencer Oliver. He's with us at ringside tonight. He's talking to Adam Smith now. Well, Spencer, it's really starting to warm up now, isn't it? Yeah, it's looking like an excellent fight, Adam. I mean, um, Drew Dockett, he's, come, he's obviously come with a game plan. His game plan is to push Patrick on the back foot, which is what you've got to do to beat him, I think. And so, you know, it's, it looks like it's going to warm up into a great fight. It's going to be a long one, by the looks of things, anyway. But Mullings winning the round so far. Yeah, I think Mullings is just sneaking around at the moment. I think you can tell those weight, that, that weight difference, you know, Drew moving up the extra four pounds. You can see that he's carrying a little bit. And I think at the moment, Mullings, Mullings does look stronger, but there's a long way to go. Thanks a lot, Spencer. Spencer Oliver, who ran the marathon last week. Well done to him. And looks none the worse for the experience, either. Good body punches there from Mullings. Really is looking very lively, putting these punches together very well. Here's the fourth round. Doherty, I feel, needs a goodish round here. Beginning to fall behind on the scorecard. I think the corner might have told him something to that effect, trainer Jerry Dunlicky. <laughs> Best performance in a little while this so far from Mullings. Yes, he really looks as if he's got a good level of concentration. He really wants to have a good performance here. I think he, he needs one as, as well, just to lift to that, that higher level. Better from Doherty. Just needing to get his punches off a little bit quicker, you feel. Jock, if he's trying to do that in this round, but he's caught by that left hook there, caught him off balance, and he's having a cover up here as Mullings digs in the body shots as well. And he's Gimli fighting back, Doherty. Trying to now take the fight to Mullings.
struggling with the speed of Mullins. Mullins, wherever he goes, he's looking to, to land a punch. Where Doherty just needs to, to set himself. And by doing that, he's getting caught. I think he's struggling a little bit too with the just move up the weights. He's been used to fighting bantam weights. This is a strongish and reasonably hard punching super bantam. Well, you would think he's, he's bound to feel it in there, as you said, in the, the, you know, there is a difference. And Doherty has lost four of his last five fights, albeit in pretty high class company. Most luckily, when he gave Paul Lloyd a good run for his money, but lost it over the full 12 round distance. Everything going to Mullings so far, though, in this contest, but it's still comparatively early. Good punches from Doherty there, pushing Mullings on the back, but Mullings just gone a, a little quieter at this stage in this round. It's the best yet from Doherty. More live sport for you on Sunday, including live cricket from 2.30. It's the seventh one-day international, West Indies against Australia. And here at 6.30, live Super League, Sheffield against Wakefield. So live cricket and live Super League, just part of another... ...cricket and live Super League, just part of another big day of live action for you on Sunday here on Sky Sports. Now it's Mullings Doherty, round five, Glenn and Ian. Thanks, Paul. Interestingly, we've reached the stage after four rounds. There's a new WBC experiment where they're going to be announcing the scores after four and eight rounds of fights in the near future. Not an idea I agree with, and you won't see it here tonight. He's getting a warning for holding them. It's a, a little interesting, that, because he's been getting caught with a, a few more punches, Dougherty having a bit of success towards the end of the fourth. Mullins' answer to that is to go out and try to step it up even more, turn up the heat on Doherty. And Doherty did well there, kept his cool, kept his hands up, and then straight back at Mullins. Here's the scorecard for you. Yes, I give the, the first three to Doherty in the, the fourth round. I give Evie, even with, with Doherty just coming into the fight a little. And he's starting to just force Mullins onto the back foot a little more, where he doesn't look quite as comfortable. Mullins is covering up quite well when he gets into that position and looking for the odd counter too. side work I think the difference is that Doherty now prepared to push Mullins back Mullins not replying as he should he needs to come back full of fire Mullins' work with not the same authority about it in this round is Doherty just beginning to find a foothold here? Well, I think this could be a, a different fight if Doherty does get a foothold in it. It will then become a little difficult for Mullins. Caught with a left hook there, looked like on the far ropes, Mullins. few seconds left in the fifth round, just a feeling that Drew Doherty is coming back a little. He needs more. Well, for the first time, I think Doherty's done more in this round. Getting in with another left hook as well there. 
just picking his punches maybe a little better than Mullins two in the round. Soft and breeze like satin and lace A wondrous place mm -hmm. A wondrous place Welcome back to Peterborough British Super Bantamweight Championship action live for you tonight. Here's what the computer says so far. Champion Pat Mullings, 106 punches landed to Doherty's 82. We oh, have Mullins in a handy lead, but I reckon Doherty won that last round, didn't he, Glenn? Yes, I uh, thought he did. He was certainly busy a, a different round. He decided to try and take the fight to Mullins, push Mullins on the back foot, and it all changed the round for the better to Doherty. Here's the sixth round. Mullins, the champion in the black trunks, calls himself the gladiator and says he's dedicating this fight tonight to his friend Richie Edwards, a boxer who died in tragic circumstances last month. There was a minute's silence for him earlier on in the evening. Doherty, of course, was involved in a tragedy of his own, that fight against James Murray back in 1995, a truly terrible night up in Glasgow. Some big punches getting through there from Mullins, but Doggerty's still taking them well. He manages to get his, his gloves up for a lot. A lot of blood around the nose of Doggerty, but he's starting to come on a little stronger now. And starting to make it harder work now for Mullins. It's a different fight from the one we were watching in the first three rounds. Mullings has just slowed a little. He's come back to the kind of pace and rhythm that Doherty likes to fight in. Well, he doesn't fight for, for three minutes around Mullings, and I think when he, when he stops working, now Doherty's starting to put pressure on of his own, and I think that's now starting to trouble Mullings. Decent body shots, though, from Mullings, who's really going for haymakers with those uppercuts. This is a good cluster from him. Nice answer. More cuts around the head. Now, for Drew Doherty, who's caught with the right hand. It's a nice riposte, this from Mullings. He just looked as if he gritted his teeth there and come back with some heavy punches and some damage now to the, the nose and mouth of Drew Doherty. He's certainly beginning to bear the scars of battle through Doherty now. But here he goes again now with a nice little cluster. The round swinging this way and that has been a good one. Good little short shots inside. And now Mullins tries the big looping hooks around the outside. Doherty dominating the early part of the round. Mullins coming on strong in the middle part of it. And some good exchanges again towards the end of it. Well, we're getting the opinions of all sorts of people about this fight tonight. You've heard from Spencer Oliver and Glenn McCrory. What about Barry McGuigan? How's he reading it? Barry? Yeah, and I read that fight an, an awful lot closer than you guys have it. I have it even at this stage. Uh, Drew Doherty's... Uh, to my mind, being more consistent, again, we're talking about inconsistencies at the, at the start of the fight, and, and that's what we're getting with, um, with Mullins again. Ten seconds of blast in action, and then he goes back and, uh, you know, admires his good work. And uh, in the meantime, Drew Doherty's piling the points up, keeping, keep on coming at him, throwing lots of little clusters of punches. And, uh, you know, to my mind, you know, you have an action like this uh, with Mullins, but... Doherty coming back and breaking, you know, breaking him up with nice little tidy shots on the inside. He's a he's a weak puncher, but he throws an awful lot of leather, and uh, still very much in the balance of fight. It's 
So coming up for the seventh round, Barry thinks it's uh, closer than uh, we have it at ringside. I've got Mullings ahead, certainly on his far start, but Doherty has suggested, certainly, in the last couple of rounds, that he's well capable of coming back into this and maybe even taking the title away from Mullings. You wouldn't really want to have a serious bet on the outcome at this stage. Well, I've got it quite different. I've got Mullings three points ahead with that very good start. But it's far from over. With Doherty still looking strong, trying to make Mullings fight when he doesn't want to. And we, we mentioned the experience of Doherty, and that could really serve him well. And that experience goes right the way back to when he was a boy, five-time Scottish ABA champion. He beat Wayne McCulloch and Johnny Armour in the amateurs. Good right hand through the middle from Doherty too. Marked up around the face a little bit, but doesn't seem at all unruffled or at all ruffled, I should say, by anything that Mullins has done. Swelling developing over the left eye now for Mullins too. Seventh round, due to go 12, of course, with the British eight stone, 10 pound title at stake. Good uppercut there from Mullins, he'd used that left hand well. Just got Doherty into the, the right range and then threw a, a good uppercut. And a very sharp left hand that brought more blood coming from the nose of Drew Doherty. Just on his toes a little bit here now, Mullings. Looking to get in with some punches and then a way out of range if he can. Does fight in burst though. Yes, I think that, that's the problem that Mullins has. And I think Doherty's realising that and really coming on strong when Mullins stops working. And the result of all that is an ebb and flow to the action. It makes it an absorbing fight to watch. Mullins again looking to hold. Yes, nice from Mullins, covering up and then whipping in the right hand. Definitely the better hand speed from Mullins, but this steady, consistent rhythm and composure about Drew Doherty. Another man that Doherty has beaten in his time is Steve Robinson. I think that was Doherty's fourth professional fight. Steve Robinson, the former world featherweight champion, who only lost the title to Nassim Hamid. Well, they're working hard in Mullins' corner, just trying to get that swelling down around the left eye. He was looking tired, I thought, in that round, Mullings. Where Doherty was still looking strong, still pushing forward, and trying to make Mullins work for the, the three minutes of that round. I've got it four rounds to two, with one even in Mullings' favour at the moment. Very, very similar. Back then, we've got it for sale. It is one of those fights that's open to other interpretations. As you've been hearing, Barry McGuigan thinks it's closer. Here's round eight. Black trunks, remember, of Mullins. Red of Drew Doherty, trying to end this long losing run that Scotland have in these British Championship fights. Both 
have their successes when one does the other comes straight back the head back of Mullings. He's got this little swelling over one eye. Who has the staying power? Who can produce the constant work rate in the closing stages here? There's still plenty of action you feel left in this contest. Well, you'd think so anyway. From Mullins, just trying to bring them those hands down. Doggedy keeping them up very tight. And Mullins wants to bring them down. Doggedy trying to become a British champion at a second weight. Remember. Doggedy just being outworked a little. You feel in this round by Mullings, though. <laughs> Lateral movement from Mullings. Slightly different tactics from him. And he's having to work harder because Dolan is trying to push him back. Up well, though. Not really doing too much himself, though, in this round. Not much that's effective, anyway. And this is a, a kind of round from both of them. Neither one is having that good a, a spell in it. So a lot more punches missed or hit the gloves. Now, there were some good body shots earlier on in that round from Pat Mullings, the 28-year-old. Doherty, five years older remember and here are those body shots Glenn yes he started the, the round well trying to put in those body punches to bring those hands down Doggerty is keeping them up very well and not allowing Mullins to, to get through and really trying to bang them in there but Doggerty obviously worked very hard for this kept his hands up didn't let any spaces come where Mullings could get a decent shot in. Jerry Donaghy with uh, Benny King in the corner for Drew Doherty tonight. Kevin Sanders, the main man for Patrick Mullings, the champion boxing out of that southpaw stance, remember. Ninth round. To the last third of the contest. Probably looking for that straight right hand downstairs, just trying to get it to the solar plexus. Seems to lose concentration there for a moment, as if troubled by something. Mullings and covering up in the corner. Now, was he caught? by a little sneak shot there. I'm not sure that body punch had a, a decent effect. He was certainly just troubled by something. He was looking at the canvas for a moment and looked away and then retreated. Bizarre little episode. Seems OK again now, though. Defence from Doherty. Mullings' gun shield nearly coming out for a moment, but it didn't. Well, we thought this would be a long, fairly grueling fight, and it's turning out that way. Turn that 
to, to be a good one. Both men having the successes, neither one has really dominated for any length of time. Blood by the left eye of Drew Doherty as well now. Doherty's still looking strong, still pushing Mullins back, some good punches inside there from Doherty. Much better work rate from Doherty for a moment. Off goes Mullins into one of his fast and furious combinations. Looking to step it up here, now it's Doherty's turn to cover up. Not many of these getting through the right uppercut did, twice. Then the body shot. Mullins is quite flashy when he moves through the gears. Yes, he is flashy, but he's not having that good effect with the punches. They're all going around the side of the, of the head and being caught on the arms. They look good, but they weren't all getting through there. Let's get a word from Spencer Oliver. Well, Spencer, this is interesting, isn't it? I mean, uh, Mullings looks like he's half asleep sometimes, and then he puts on a, a little burst like that. That's right, just as, I, just as I thought it would go, like, Mullings would start well, and then Drew would start coming back into it. And Pat, you know, he looks like he's really feeling the pace at the moment. He's, he's done an excellent job there towards the end of the rounds, but you see the last 10 seconds, he looked like he's all blown himself out again. So, like you say, he's sort, he's sort of stop and start, and in between that, he's letting Drew Docky get back into the fight. But Drew's stuck to his game plan, he's sticking to his game plan, he's standing Mullins in his face, and that's what he's got to do to win this fight. Thanks, Spencer. Later on tonight, you'll have a chance to see David Starry, one of our top super middleweights in action with Bulgarian opposition this evening. Good fighter, Starry, and one who could seriously go places. <laughs> Here's the 10th round of this one. Patrick Mullings, the champion from Harrow in North London. Again, having to work very hard in a British championship fight against the determined and, some might say, deserving Drew Doherty. Well, I've got it close enough now, just one point in it. I give Doherty the last. Mullins was trying to do more, look flashier, but the, the work throughout was from Doherty. He just looked stronger, nicer shots inside, and Mullins not looking as comfortable. Little lulls in the performance from Patrick Mullins. This is good work here from Drew Doherty again. Every time you think Mullings is about to go into a really bad match, he'll suddenly spring back into life again. At times those shots look flashy, but Doherty with a good defence, taking a lot on the, the arms and the gloves. This is not as spectacular as the work from Mullins, but it's solid and it's more constant. He's lost his balance for a moment there, Mullins. A little sign perhaps of growing tiredness. Doherty making most of the running in this one, the 10. Doherty was talking before this fight about maybe he would retire, win or lose afterwards. And sometimes they say when a fighter is talking of retirement, he's already retired in his head. Hasn't looked that the way though, has he? He has and he's looked strong and determined. He said if he did, he wanted to go out on a win, felt he could do it here. Certainly getting more and more into this fight. Mullins trying to be flashy there, dancing around with his hands, just shooting out the, the right hands. But nothing to, to that much effect. Mullins 
Jones was a hyperactive type, even as a child, where he went to a special school for problem children in Dorset. That was Doc at his round for me. I don't know what you thought, Glenn. Yes, I agree with you, Ian. That was Doc at his round. And I might call that levels it up now with Mullins just looking sloppy and tired. And uh, the last couple of rounds hasn't had that much good work. I've got it five rounds to four with one even in favour of Mullings. You're saying level, aren't you? I'm saying level. It's interesting, isn't it? There we are, you can see that Doherty's been in nine scheduled 12-rounders and Mullings five. How many times have they actually completed the full distance? Well, Doherty's done it five times in his career and Mullings twice. So Stamina, you wouldn't think, should be a problem. They've been there before, but Doherty's done it more often. He does look strong, too, even up, up in weight here tonight. This is the 11th round. Is Drew Doherty, after a slow start, turning this around, and is he at last going to give Scotland a famous win in a British championship fight it's 1971 it's a bit of a mouth for this so i'll uh, take it slowly since the scott beat a defending english british champion in england that was evan armstrong knocking out jimmy revy for the featherweight championship a long time ago touch and go for mullins now glenn yes it is i think he needs a, a big effort he needs to try and Get some sort of control in this fight, but he has looked quite tired in the last few rounds. The bunches of punches that he throws have become less and less frequent. Mullins trying to lift it again. I tell you, this Drew Doherty is a very durable character, normally. Depends what you like a bit, the solid, steady work rate of Drew Doherty, all these flashy bursts with maybe a bit more power from Mullings. on the last three minutes this couldn't it it could it could <laughs> there you see it oh. punches landed very very close well, on the computer that, that is amazing isn't it i mean look at that somewhat 440 punches nearly landed in the fight and there's only three in it between the pair of them that's the computer trying to sort it out just a little guide for you computers don't score fights not yet anyway well i, I give the last one to, to mullins i just thought he tried that bit harder, got through with a few more punches, and I thought his effort was better. 
but it, it's very close, I feel, and um, as you see, it could well depend on this last round. You and I disagreed about that last one. I now have it level. <laughs> Here's the last round. Red trunks through Doherty. Is he going to do it for Scotland and take away this title? They felt they were hard done by with this very championship on the line last time when Brian Carr didn't get the nod against the same opponent, Patrick Mullins. This looked as if it was going to be Mullins' night, and maybe reasonably easily early on. It's all changed, though. It's a hard, tight, and now pretty tense affair in this final round. Dave Paris, the man who will have to sort it out on the scorecard. Doherty has shown he retains plenty of ambition, even at 33, forcing Mullins back. Trying to get those arms working inside. A lot of these later rounds have been tough to call. Yes, they have. They've been very close. This right hand again from Doherty. As Mullins starts to try and pick it up. That throw with the left hand, Pat Mullins. to match each other, punch for punch, and take the eye of the referee. Oh, walks onto a right hand there, Doherty. He's another cutting as well there from Mullings. They're obviously both very, very tired. shot from Doherty, this time who turns Mullings on those ropes. Well, this is going to be a very tight call, isn't it? This is very, very close. They've both had a few successes. A lot of punches missed because they're both that tired. Not many of these getting through from Mullings just at the moment with Doherty holding his gloves up high on the inner side. 25 seconds left. Not much getting through, not cleanly anyway. It was a little messy this one, but you can understand that. He fought it at a good pace. Pretty ragged last round, who's got it? Drew Doherty has won the British Super Bantamweight Championship for Scotland and ends that long losing sequence going back over 15 fights over three and a half years. He was the last Scot to hold a British Championship and he is also the next one. Victory tonight, Tommy Gilmore. His manager hugs him, and Drew Doherty turned it around to take the title. Mullins disconsolate, losing the championship in his first defence. How close was it on the scorecard? We'll find out now from MC Gary Logan. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 superb rounds of boxing, Referee Davis Paris scores a contest 116 points to 113 points in favour of the winner and new British Super Bantamweight Champion from Conrad in Scotland. 116 Doherty. to 113, seven rounds to four with one even wider than we thought. Glenn in favour of Drew Doherty. Hey, I actually had it level myself. Yes, I had it very close. I just thought Mullins just, just squeaked it by one round. But uh, well done to Doherty. He worked hard for, for three minutes, where Mullins, not as much. A big, big win, and well done to Scotland, and well done to Drew Doherty. And if ever a fella deserved a second reign as a British champion, it's certainly Drew Doherty, an amazing achievement. Now, backstage, David Starr is getting ready.
He's been waiting patiently for the last 20 odd minutes. He wants to send out a warning tonight to the likes of Woodall, Reed, Calzaghe that this young man's starry is a super middleweight on the way up. He is live next. But Drew Doherty is back as a British champion. A long and dedicated career. So many setbacks along the way and a dramatic victory tonight. And if ever a man on dedication alone deserved to make this step back up into title class, surely it's Doherty. He must be thrilled with himself. A great moment in his life. <laughs> he's talking to Ian Dow. Well, as you can see, he's a little bit exhilarated about it. Just tell us your thoughts about breaking this long losing sequence for Scotland and doing it, as you say, at 33. Tommy knows. I wasn't even thinking about money. I wanted to be the last person to win to hold the British out for Scotland and the first person to regain it for Scotland. The now I'm in the record books and that's what I wanted, more than anything. How did you feel that the fight was going from your point of view there? Were you confident that you were going to get it? It was close. I knew it was close. My corner was telling me it was close. I wasn't, I wasn't sure I was ahead. I wasn't sure I was behind. I just knew it was a close fight. And I'm just proud because I've done it for my wee girl and my wee boy. You've got a little little baby boy at home, haven't you, Callum? Rachel's a wee girl and Callum's a wee boy. Would they have been at home watching this tonight? No, Callum would be in his bed. <laughs> Rachel would be in her bed as well. But, you, but your lady Caroline would have been there, wouldn't yeah, she, watching? Well, I don't know. She's taping it, but I don't know if she'll watch it. What does this mean, do you think, for Scotland? Because the country must have been thinking whether we're never going to have a British champion again. I'm over the moon. As, as everybody in my family knows, I'm the proudest Scotsman alive. I research my history. I'm part of the McGregor clan, Doherty, uh, Rob Roy, brave man. I'm, I'm just over the moon. Great, great triumph for you tonight, and no Scottish lament this time. Thank you. Fantastic. Now, if he was thinking about calling it a day at this point, I don't think either way he can lose, Barry, because he goes out on a great high if this is the moment when Doherty decides to retire. But he does have the right to profit from all the years of hard labour that have gone into coming back like this, surely. Without a doubt, this guy is deserving of everything he can get out of the game from here on in. He's had so much tragedy and so much disappointment in his life. And I am delighted, I'm as delighted as Tommy Gilmore is for him. He's a great kid. 